Dear students of English Honours BA Part 3, in my last lecture, we had talked about Aristotle's theory of imitation. Today, I am going to give you a summary of Aristotle's concept of tragedy. It is in the sixth chapter of his Poetics that Aristotle discusses and defines tragedy. In fact, it can be stated that this chapter is the core of the poetics. The discussion is very comprehensive and carries deep insight. According to Aristotle, tragedy has six elements. It has plot, character, thought, diction, song and spectacle. Now defining tragedy, Aristotle states that Tragedy is the imitation of an action, serious, complete and of a certain magnitude in a language beautified in different parts with different kinds of embellishment through action and not narration and through scenes of pity and fear bringing about catharsis of these or such like emotions. Now elaborating the definition, Aristotle states that tragedy is different from other forms of poetry. The object that is imitated is serious in action. The object should neither be common nor frivolous. Here I am going to give you a simple example of Homer's Iliad and Odyssey and in the Indian uh, horizon we have Ramayana and Mahabharat. Now all these four books are epics and they are great. They, are, they have a magnitude and their actions are absolutely serious. They are not something common or frivolous. We have the great Ram falling victim to the to his fate and what all he suffers. Then we have the story of Iliad and then Oedipus, all are great people of grand, great grandeur and they are victims to either fate or chance or some flaw in their character. So Aristotle says the action should be serious, nothing very simple or common or frivolous. Moving further, he talks about the manner in which tragedy differs from epic poetry. Tragedy constitutes of action. And epic poetry has a narrative, verses in forms of dialogue and chorus with songs are the essential constituents of tragedy. The verses are uh, embellished. Then he comes to action. The action imitated in the tragedy is the plot. The plot has a certain logic and the sequence of events is unavoidable. The action has a beginning, a middle and an end. The beginning is the base from which the further actions, that is the middle, flow out. It is complete and not depending on any previous action. The end is inevitable depending on the beginning and the middle. According to Aristotle, tragic action should be in accordance with the laws of of probability and necessity. The action should have unity so that the end is effective. These are the three unities that Aristotle talks about. The unities of time, place and action. A, a work of art is complete if these three are observed. Talking about the magnitude of the action of a tragedy, Aristotle states that it constitutes the length of the drama. An organic whole should be maintained. Too short or too long can make or mar the very purpose of the action. That is, if it is too long, it loses its effect. If it is too short, the audience is dissatisfied. They can, by the time they complete their thought process, the tragedy ends. So, too long or too short actions can mar the very purpose of the action. This should be observed strictly. For plot, Aristotle states that it can be either a simple plot 
or a complex plot. In a simple plot, there is no peripety and discovery. The change in the fortune of the hero goes with the two. In a complex plot, the hero faces both peripety and discovery. Peripety is the change in the fortune of the hero and discovery is the moment from ignorance to knowledge. That is the point when the hero discovers that the, his fortune has changed and he discovers his mistake. So this is very important, the peripety and the discovery. Verses and songs embellish the tragedy and embellishment gives beauty and pleasure to the work of art. Therefore, these two also make an essential element of the tragedy. Then, according to Aristotle's theory, tragedy should have a function. So, without a function, the entire exercise is futile. What is the function? The function is to bring out the element of pity and fear. So, this is very important, the element of pity and fear. And once, when these elements of pity and fear are aroused, then there is catharsis of these emotions. Catharsis is the purgation of these emotions. Purgation is purification, a cleansing of the process. In other words, when the hero, after the spectacle, realizes that he has gone wrong somewhere and he discovers his mistake, then there is a feeling of pity and fear. And the moment he realizes and he gets that feeling of pity and fear, then that is the discovery, then he wants to purgate. Yeah. In other words, he wants to eliminate these flaws from his character and repentance follows. That is, the moment the repentance follows, there is a purification of his soul. And then the very purpose of tragedy is achieved. That is a cleansing process where the hero is cleansed of all his guilt and he realizes and he is sorry. So this is a brief summary of his theory of uh, tragedy, his concept of tragedy. Now you can go back to the text and by listening to the lecture and reading the text, I am sure students, you will get your concept clear and you will be able to understand Aristotle's concept of tragedy. Thank you.